A new human study has shown a whopping 29% improvement in the cognitive abilities of Alzheimer's disease patients when they take a combination of supplements. Let's go through the study and then at the end of the video I'll share with you how it changes the supplements that I personally take. The combination of supplements were 12 grams of L-serine, 1 gram of nicotinamide riboside, 2.5 grams of NAC and 3.5 grams of L-carnitine. And this combination is known as the combined metabolic activators. The theory goes that there is a growing body of evidence that Alzheimer's disease is closely associated with metabolic abnormalities and oxidative stress linked to critical elements of neurodegeneration such as mitochondrial dysfunction and bioenergetic impairment. So it's hoped that by supporting the brain's metabolism and reducing the oxidative stress we can improve the brain's function and therefore cognitive abilities. This is a really interesting approach because although Alzheimer's disease is defined by an accumulation of abnormal amyloid proteins, so far amyloid lowering approaches have failed to provide any cognitive of benefits in human clinical trials. Essentially, we can see from scans that there is this buildup of amyloid proteins, but the existing therapies that have been trialed to lower amyloid buildup, they've failed. So it's time for a new approach where a growing body of evidence suggests that impaired brain energy metabolism and mitochondrial dysfunction in Alzheimer's disease may contribute to the cognitive decline. Therefore, by combining multiple compounds to reduce this oxidative injury, we may be able to target multiple pathways at the same time. So let's go through each of the four ingredients to make sure that we understand the underlying theory as to how these combined metabolic activators will improve brain performance. Alzheimer's disease brains appear to have lower glutathione levels, so glutathione is a powerful antioxidant. And by taking the building blocks of glutathione, we can help rebuild our glutathione levels. So serine is converted into glycine, which is a building block of glutathione, and then we've got NAC. The next ingredient is nicotinamide riboside, which helps to support NAD levels. And NAD is central to our metabolism. And finally, carnitine helps with fatty acid metabolism. Therefore, combining these four supplements together supports our metabolism at multiple different levels. Coming back to the study, this is a randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled human phase 2 clinical study. So a phase 2 study is primarily for safety and ideally would be seeing a trend towards improvement. The study was performed in Turkey and patients were enrolled in the trial if they were over 50 years of age with mild to moderate Alzheimer's disease according to a cognitive subscale. Patients were randomly assigned to either receive the combined metabolic activators or placebo in a 2 to 1 split. Both the placebo and the combined metabolic activators were provided in a powdered form that were to be dissolved in water and taken orally. So I had a question about this. We want to make sure that during the study the participants don't know which group they're in, that way they are blinded. But since both the placebo and the combined metabolic activators were provided in a powdered form and then dissolved in water, I was concerned that the solutions would taste different and therefore the participants could work out which group they were in. But when I reached out to one of the lead authors of the study, he assured me that both the placebo and the combined metabolic activators tasted the same. The primary endpoint of the study was to figure out if the combined metabolic activators would improve cognitive function and then the secondary outcome was to make sure that it was safe. Now I'm nitpicking here but I've got a bit of an issue with this. It's a phase 2 study so ideally the primary objective should be safety because since it's a phase 2 study there's not going to be enough participants to figure out for sure if we're going to see a true statistically significant improvement in the cognitive abilities of these patients. So for example with the phase 2 rapamycin and exercise study that I'm currently fundraising for the primary objective here is to make sure that the therapy is safe, that it's not going to cause any issues with the muscle performance of my patients. And then ideally we'd want to see a trend towards improvement in the muscle performance, but that's not going to reach statistical significance because again I'm fundraising for a phase 2 study. So thank you to everyone who's donated so far, and to the now 250 patrons that are now supporting the channel. Coming back to the study, they started with 69 patients, so 47 were in the combined metabolic activator group, and 22 in the placebo group. And and at the end, 60 patients completed the full study, so 40 patients in the combined metabolic activator group and 20 patients in the placebo. And the study ran for a total of 84 days. Before the study began, there were no significant differences at baseline, which is important. We want to make sure that we're comparing apples to apples. So coming to the results, when comparing the cognitive abilities at day 84 of the study compared to the beginning of the study, there was a whopping 29% improvement in the cognitive abilities with the combined metabolic activators. 
However, there was also a significant improvement in the placebo group, so the placebo group improved by 12%, which is a bit odd at first glance because Alzheimer's disease is a progressive illness, so you'd expect that over time the patient should get worse, but in the placebo group there was a 12% improvement, so what's going on? The authors explained this by referencing the placebo effect, which is apparent in early stages of Alzheimer's disease clinical trials, where the placebo group generally have an unchanged response or even an improvement that may continue for up to 12 months, followed by a natural disease progression over time, where the disease becomes worse and the placebo response decreases. It's important to note, however, that when you're comparing both groups, there was no significant difference. And this is what we would expect from a phase 2 study, because again, phase 2 studies, they don't have enough participants. What we want to see from a phase 2 study is that this treatment is safe, and ideally we can see a trend towards improvement. That's exactly what we see here in this study, where we can see that there were no severe adverse events in the combined metabolic activated group, and we can see a trend towards improvement. So overall, this phase 2 study is a huge success, and this research gives a strong justification to move to a larger phase 3 study. My overall thoughts is that I'm very excited about the strategy of combining multiple different supplements to support our metabolism. And when it comes to the supplements that I personally take, I will still mega dose vitamin B3, so 50 milligrams, which is over 3 times the recommended daily intake for vitamin B3, but it's still nowhere near the dose dosages used here. So the dosages in this study used 1 gram of nicotinamide riboside, which is over 60 times the recommended daily intake for vitamin B3. This study also used extremely high dosages of serine and NAC, which personally I would not advise my patients to do until we've got that larger phase 3 study. I'm also a little bit concerned about using serine instead of glycine to support our glutathione levels, because there is a correlation with higher serine blood levels and Alzheimer's disease. So when it comes to that side of the equation. Personally, I plan to rely on the glycine content found in the collagen supplement that I already take. And from the age of 45, that's when I plan to start taking NAC at 1 gram a day. And there's a link to my full supplement stack in the pinned comment. To sum things up, this is an incredibly successful phase 2 study. We can see that this approach is safe, and there's a trend towards improvement. I can't wait to see a larger phase 3 study to see if there is a statistically significant improvement in the cognitive abilities of Alzheimer's disease patients. In the meantime, I did mention collagen supplements, and I've got a video here outlining the human research. A massive thank you to donotage.org for their $10,000 donation to my rapamycin study. They are a health research organization, and to benefit from the ingredients as well as a 10% discount code, check out the pinned comment.